Hello and thank you for joining us. This is Health Matters on Channels Television. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. All over the world, there are more than 264 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. By Friday, December the 3rd, the toll was over, death toll was over 5.2 million. In Nigeria, there were more than 214,000 confirmed cases and more than 207,000 people have recovered. Globally, over 8.1 billion COVID-19 vaccines have been administered, while in Nigeria, more than 3.7 million people are fully vaccinated. For the past two years, the world has been contending with the COVID-19 pandemic, and the fight is not over. But there is another global health threat that has been with us for 40 years. According to the World Health Organization, as of 2020, Almost 38 million people were living with HIV and AIDS, 1.8 million in Nigeria. There were 1.5 million new infections and 680,000 deaths globally. Although there's been significant progress, important global targets for 2020 were not met. Talking about AIDS now. The UN says without bold action against inequalities, the world risks missing the targets to end AIDS by 2030, a prolonged COVID-19 pandemic, and a spiraling social and economic crisis. My guest joining us in our Abuja studio is Acting Director, Policy, Planning, and Coordination in the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, Dr. Adefunke Oki. You're welcome to the show. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for having me on your show. Now, people have been talking about uh, equitable access. It's, a, it's, a, it's prominent in your theme for this year, going on to 2026. But it really became famous during this pandemic. The AIDS community, HIV AIDS community, and those who mean anything in there, have been talking about equitable access for the longest time. What is different this time? Thank you, Mary. Um, let me just start by saying that um, we have to first of all talk about what, inequity, what inequitable access is before we talk about what is different this time. When we talk about inequitable access, we're saying those who should have access to treatment, to HIV tests, to viral load tests, not all of them are opportuned to actually have that access. And what are the reasons for this? Take, for example, pregnant women. When we want to prevent mother-to-child transmission of HIV and AIDS, it's very important for every pregnant woman, and I repeat, every pregnant woman in Nigeria, to be tested for HIV during their antenatal period. But what we find is that not every clinic can grant that access. So you find some people that have access to programmatic commodities can provide the tests at a minimum rate, maybe 500 naira. Some may even be able to provide it free of charge. But in certain private hospitals, you'll pay much more than that. So we're saying, can every pregnant woman afford that? The other thing we're talking about is the access to the services themselves. Yes, we have wonderful partners, and I want to thank PEPFA, that's the American people. I also at this point want to thank the Global Fund for AIDS, TB, and malaria. They have provided resources, they have provided drugs, they have provided, in some cases, laboratory tests, even test kits, and what have you. But if a client has to pay consultation fees or even registration fees, some clients may not be able to afford that. And in fact, some of our clients cannot afford the transport fare to the facilities. These are some of the inequalities we're talking about. I also want to talk about adolescents and young people. In Nigeria, if you're not 18 years and above, there are certain things that you cannot just walk up to the clinic to ask for. 
we will require consent from your parents. <coughs> that means they are actually denied access because some of these people are actually in the university at 16 years. And then we're saying they cannot have themselves tested for HIV and AIDS if they want to. These are some of the issues. And then I want to talk about the gender issue too. We have a lot of females, depending on the culture and the area of Nigeria, they cannot go to clinic without the permission of either their husbands, if they're married, or the male figure in the family, maybe their fathers or their elder brothers or something. So you find someone who wants to be tested. She can't do it privately without taking permission. That is a form of access that has been denied. And in our country, a lot of men, thank God for our men, they feel very strong, very agile, very active. They usually do not see the need to go to the health facility until something critical happens to them. These are all forms of denial of access. So for the pregnant woman, it means that if she's not tested during the pregnancy or even during labor, she may have a child. She may be able to transmit HIV to her child, to the unborn child, and then the child automatically develops the HIV, I mean, contracts the HIV virus and may develop HIV, may develop AIDS in the process. So what are we saying? We want everyone that should have access to have access. We do not want them to be denied financially. We do not want them to be denied by geographic location because sometimes when the facilities are far, there's an issue. So these are some of the inequalities we're talking about. And you have asked me a very germane question. What is new? What is new? What we're doing things differently to ensure that there is equitable access for everyone in Nigeria. So one of the things we're doing is that we're focusing on the community-led approaches and initiatives. So for those who are already pause living with HIV and AIDS, we allow members of the Can we pause for a moment on group. that? We'll come to that in a bit. But yes, you have yes. raised some issues that, yes. you know, you know they, are, they are really important, but they look insurmountable. When you say every woman must be tested, not everybody knows their status. <laughs> then if you're giving mm. access to every single woman, that's a whole lot of money involved. A whole lot of money. And uh, 2030 is eight years from now. How is that going to be achieved? Yes. So thank you again. Well, primarily I mentioned pregnant women. That is a priority. But you have brought up a very good question. How will everybody be tested? For instance, every woman. It is actually not difficult because right now we have what we call the HIV self-test kits and they are very easy to use. They're WHO pre-qualified and they have been validated in Nigeria as well by the relevant regulatory bodies. So what this means is that I can walk up to a, to a pharmacy or a clinic or any outlet that is allowed to sell these items. We have the ones that can be used orally. All you need is to, you know, press it against your gum, the upper gum, the lower gum. That is an oral one. It just uses our saliva and you put it in the, in the tube that's in the chemical for like 20 minutes and it gives you a result. Then we have the blood-based ones. So altogether right now, at least there are three that have been pre-qualified by WHO and also validated in Nigeria. One oral, two blood-based. So I don't even have to go to the clinic before I can test myself and know my status. So for those who are very concerned about their privacy, they can do it in the comfort of their homes. And we have made it easy for people 
because we have said whatever you whatever results you get in your homes kindly communicate with the health facility so you still have to go to the health facility and tell them i did this test this was my result and then they will carry out other tests in the facility to confirm your results and then we can record it's very important for us to have the data so they can record that yes this person carried out a test and we have confirmed it in the facility and this is the result not How only that are these tests? of course some of these people may be positive and we're, 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 we're aware of the possibilities one of the things we always want Nigerians to know that you don't have to panic even if you are HIV positive right now we have the drugs they are readily available they are free most general hospitals are actually on this program now so all you need to do is to go to that facility pay a subsidized rate and in some cases some governments in this country some state governments have actually abolished all payment of fees for HIV positive clients and okay, that's just true. a moment are you so saying you just then, go? are you saying then that the major problem is how to get these people to do these tests and communicate to the clinic because what you're saying sounds a lot like family planning which has been quite successful I mean in Nigeria you don't have to tell anybody yes. that you're going to the family planning clinic you get to talk with a yes. health professional choose your method and go ahead yes. with it and nobody needs to know so if they have access yes. to these self-test kits what's the hang-up Well, I think the truth is that um, people do not know a lot about those test kits yet. Some people know. The manufacturers and who have tried road shows, um, media uh, programs, they've actually gone to facilities to provide free kits. But we need to create more awareness for Nigerians that you can actually go and buy this kit on your own and determine your status. This is very important. Um, some people will want to complain about the cost, but like I said, some are actually free right now in the facilities. You can take advantage of that right now, where partners have supplied those kits. But beyond that, other people can afford to pay 1,500 Naira, 2,000 Naira, buy the kits and do their tests in their homes. And you can actually get counseled from your home by calling a toll-free line at the National Agency for the Control of AIDS. We have a toll-free line, 6222. And that toll-free line, you can operate it if you have an MTN line, if you're operating an Airtel line, or a 9 mobile line. So we have tried to make it easy. We have trained people at the call center to respond promptly to people. We have trained them with the right answers to frequently asked questions. So people actually can make use of these things. The only thing we have to do now, like you have said, is to create awareness. Once people are aware, they begin to take advantage of this system. And of course, very important, I want to emphasize that, you still have to let the facility know that you carried out this test and you got this result and then they will confirm and record data very important okay so i know that one of the major problems we have is mother to child transmission so yes let's say women pregnant women come to the clinic is it guaranteed then that they will have this test where, it, where does the problem arise from, is it that they cannot get the test when they get to the clinic or they don't come to the clinic, they are not being allowed to come to the clinic? Where, where does the problem actually arise? Great question. Actually, we have, um, you know, Nigeria, we have diverse cultural settings. So in certain cultures, women feel free they tell their husbands, I'm going to the clinic, and they go and they have their babies, and they are tested at the clinics. But certain cultures, they prefer to have their children at home. So such people, if you don't go to the facility, the facility will not even know that there's someone that is pregnant, talk less of actually offering the test. But what we are doing now 
is we're trying to break the barriers. And of course, don't forget, we must not forget that some people cannot actually afford even the transport fares to the facilities. We must be mindful of that. But what we're trying to do is to break barriers and to go through the community settings. So what we're saying is we're engaging with religious leaders so that they can sensitize their people. We're engaging with leaders of women so that they tell them the advantages of registering at the hospital, delivering at the hospital, carrying out their tests at the hospital. We're also engaging with leaders of men to encourage them to allow their wives to use hospital facilities. Then we encourage what we call skilled bath attendants. So you have skilled bath attendants like nurses, like midwives, midwives. like um, trained traditional bath attendants that are supported by the facilities. That is very important to actually attend to those who prefer to deliver at home. So you go to their homes, we carry out the test, help them with the deliveries, um, help them with other things, tell them about immunization, tell them how to prevent tetanus. So we're using every available means now. And that answers your question, what are we doing differently to address the inequalities? I must commend our sister agencies, the Nas uh, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and the Federal Ministry of Health as a whole. They are going out of their way with support from partners to ensure that no Nigerian woman is left behind. Okay. <clears throat> On that note, we have to take a short break. When we come back, we will continue uh, our discussion. Thanks for being with us. We are going out on a short break now, but we'll come after now. You're welcome back. We're talking about HIV AIDS, ending AIDS in Nigeria, in the world. And this is Health Matters. You can call 0805-468-3514 if you have any questions on HIV and AIDS. Our guest is Dr. Adefunke Uki. And we are continuing with the discussion. You, you see, this self-testing, to me, it's just a miracle, if you can call it that. It's, it's, it's a wonderful tool. Because I know that some people don't want to be seen walking into the hospital. So, these birth attendants and midwives, are they allowed to take these kids to these women in the house? And then, double-pronged question, for some people who feel they absolutely cannot go to the hospital, is there any provision for them to have their baby? Yes. Yes, definitely. So, this skilled bath attendants actually go to the women in their homes and they go with everything necessary, including the test kits, the HIV test kits. Not only that, there are some states in this country where the people believe so much in their traditional bath attendants, um, their faith-based organizations, and actually go for clinics in the church premises. All of them are not left out because we are aware that that is where they love to go because we normally do an assessment of areas before we go in there. We actually go to those clinics to meet them there. We go with our test kits. Before then, we would have sensitized the leaders, sensitized those who provide the services, and we will let them know what it's all about. And they cooperate fully with us. So we carry out the tests with them. We even train the trained uh, traditional bath attendants to actually carry out tests. And where they find positive clients, they bring them to facilities. We help them, maybe we pay them transport fare or something, to help them bring the clients to the facilities. So we are using all the approaches that we think will help. Because, I don't know, you must be aware of the UNH's 1990 targets. Yes. Yeah. Um, and what that simply means, that was for 2020. What that simply means is that 90% of those living with HIV and AIDS in the country should know their status. Then 90% of those 90% that know their status should be linked to treatment. 
then 90% of those linked to treatment should be virally suppressed. That's what we let's call quickly the take this call from Kendi. Let's Nigeria take a call from Kendi. Sorry to disturb, but let's take a, a call from Kendi, and we we'll get back to you. Hello, Kendi. Hello. Hello. What's your question? I'm interested in the program, and I want to ask whether there is a. Hello. Yes, we can hear. And I want to ask whether there is cure for AIDS now. Okay, thank you, KD. That is a very valid question. So, Doctor, we know up until now we've been saying there's no cure for AIDS. But how is that shaping up? I heard something about a vaccine, you know, being, uh, be, being formulated or something like that. So we need to talk about how far that vaccine has gone and if they're even looking in that area because some people say, well, we have a cocktail of drugs that reduces the viral load to less than 50 copies. It's absolutely not transmissible, no matter what. Why do we need a vaccine? But if there is a vaccine, then we don't have to spend all this money on treatment. Alternatively, the doctor will probably tell us um, which is more expensive, getting a vaccine for AIDS, HIV AIDS, or sticking to the treatment regimen, which is a lifetime issue. We've not, we're, the doctor is, uh, we've lost her for the moment, but we're expecting her to come on anytime soon. So Kende, we'll get to your question, but um, the Okorafo is on the line. Hello, Okorafo. Good afternoon, my sister. Good afternoon, Good doctor. Afternoon. Doctor, I want to find Okorafo is my name from Aristocrat. Uh, I want to find out from doctor. Some people are saying that the same drugs they use for COVID-19, the part of the drug is also for HIV. I don't know how truthful is that statement. And the, the other one is that now people are complaining about HIV. That what do we do? If somebody is having that HIV, is it prone to COVID-19? Well, thank you. I can help you with the second one. Having HIV AIDS is called a comorbidity. That means there's a disease already there before the COVID-19 came. And those with comorbidities like HIV AIDS, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, they are more prone to getting COVID-19. And they are more prone to having a serious infection from COVID-19. So if somebody uh, who doesn't have any other sickness, who never had a sickness before, has COVID-19, and somebody with HIV AIDS also gets COVID-19, the one with HIV AIDS is likely to have a more serious infection. That answers your second question, but I will let the doctor answer your first question once we get her back. So, um, Dr. Oki, I, I wonder if you heard uh, Okorafo's first question, where he said some people say uh, the, the HIV AIDS drugs are also used for COVID-19. How true is that? <laughs> no, please. Uh, I hope you can hear me. No. We can. Um, in fact, you are not supposed to use drugs that are not prescribed. So please, you have to stay in line with your prescribed medication by your doctors. The drugs for HIV AIDS are specific, and they are specific for each individual, because we have individuals on different lines of management depending on their own uh, issues and comorbidities. So please, no, you stick to what your doctor has prescribed. Then let me quickly ask, you know, Ken, they called and said, is there a cure for HIV AIDS yet? <laughs> but are we looking uh, into yes. it? <laughs> uh, there's no cure yet. So just like hypertension, diabetes, and other uh, diseases that are managed, we manage HIV and AIDS. So if you use your drugs, and thank you so much, Mary, you answered brilliantly. If you use your drugs, you actually maintain a stable status, 
what it means is that you have very few copies of the virus in your system and that's what we call viral suppression and then you cannot transmit the infection so for now that is what we have to make do with till we have a lasting solution okay let's so quickly now, take gladys there's no cure yet gladys was on the line forward to one Oh, Gladys, we've lost Gladys, too bad. Don't worry, Gladys, you can always call on another show. And it looks like we're out of time, Doctor. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was wonderful having you. Thank you also, Kende, Okurafo, and Gladys for Thank calling you. in. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.